So here I'm going to be making EMF measurements with the antenna that you saw. I've set up my signal generator um, to three and a half gigahertz. And I've just, for as an example, I've set up a 5G NR signal. So I'm looking at 3.5 gigahertz and here's my signal. My antenna's hooked up. So um, one of the first steps is to go to system, utilities, USB antenna, and then import the antenna. And after a minute, you'll see the antenna model number or its serial number on the display, and it says success. Um, I want to point out a few things here. Um, the antenna axis, auto, actually what it means is off or that the mode is controlling it. it um, it's not switched into any of the elements. This antenna is a passive antenna, but it has a switch in there that you can switch to the X, Y, or Z element. So in auto, it's just in some off position. Then you can go to X. This is the X axis. This is the Y axis. And this is the Z axis. But nearly all the time, you'll have it in auto. But I wanted to point it out to you. You can do that. So now we come in here. And the place where you can control the antenna is channel measurements. And under channel measurements, channel power. That's the only place in SA mode where you can measure the integrated power of all of these um, using the three elements. And when you go into channel power, the soft key shows up called EMF triaxial. This is the soft key you get with option 358 and with the antenna. And if you go there, you can look at the power in each axis, or generally you would say the power in all of it. And I'm going to change my frequency span to a bit wider and then change my integrating bandwidth, let's say, to 30 megahertz. And let's bring it down a bit. So this is. Now, once I say measure channel power and I pick the EMF antenna, it also changes the units to dB microvolts per meter. And let's take a look at some of those numbers. Usually without it, you get dBm. So I have a power level of minus 58 or 59 dBm roughly. And I've written that number down here. There's a great old HP app note, 150-10. It's very old. But it's two pages, it's really simple, easy to read, and it explains field strength measurements, field strength measurements and the math. Like how do you go from dBm to dB microvolts? And you add 107, and then you add in the antenna factor. That's really all it is. But it does a nice job explaining you what it's doing. You can find this on the internet if you Google 150-10 or this is the URL. So to get from the minus 59 to the dB microvolt value, you take the minus 59. You add 107, and that's 48 dB microvolts now. And then you add in your antenna factor. In our case, the antenna factor is about 46 dB, and you get the dB microvolts per meter. So minus 59 became roughly around minus 93, 94. And it's not exact because we're um, doing integrated power over the three axes over a frequency range. And where do I get these antenna factors? Here you can see it says x axis on, on, on. That means it's getting used. And if I come into the edit antenna factor and I go to 3.5 gigahertz, there's my 46 dB. That's the antenna factor that it's reading from the antenna directly. I want to show you if I go into here into utilities and switch this to x axis now, I'm only interested in the power in the x axis. If I come to scale, more, corrections. Now it's X is on, Y and Z are enabled. So enabled is not on. It's not using these values. It could if you were in auto mode, but I am using the X axis antenna. And you can also see the impact of this value. If I go and I change the 3.5 gigahertz, let's just make it zero. Let's just be extreme, change that. And if I turn off averaging, you can see that number totally changed to 47 dB. And if you wanted to save this new value, you can simply go into correction, x-axis antenna, and then save it as, for example, new x-axis. You generally don't need that, but if you have a special cal or a need, you could do that. But you're not, no worries that you're overriding um, the default parameters. You can always say import antenna, and as soon as you say import antenna, it brings in all the correct values for that antenna that came from the manufacturer. You can see we went back to the parameter. 
So that's the conversion and that's the measurements for um, using the triaxial antenna for channel power measurement. The other place that it's we can use this one, there's two specific places, is under OTA. And OTA, it's in the 5 GNR mode, not the conducted, but the 5 GNR mode. If you go in here, and let's put in the frequency. And the idea is that you want to know what is the power due to your um, signal. What is your 5G signal? What is it contributing in terms of EMF? So there it is. It detected it. And I have an R. Uh, and here, if I because I have my antenna, these parameters are actually just with the antenna in some off positions, just some picking up something off the air. But the right thing to do here is to come and say EMF and turn it on. And then you can read the RSRP value or RSRSI value if you want these in terms of dB microvolts per meter. Oh, unable to control. Oh, because I see it doesn't, it needs it to be in auto mode. So I have to go back here because it's, it's using all three axes. So then I say auto. And now it should... There it is. Now you can see the unit got converted to dB microvolts per meter. So this is making an EMF measurement. If you turn it off, so this is actually, these units will go back to dBm, but then your antenna is really an off position. You don't know what setting it is. So in OTA, and here maybe I should probably also turn on my preamp because this is an over there measurement. It should fairly soon, um, it'll populate these values. There it is. So um, that's it for making EMF measurements with the antenna.